This Echeveria chihuahuaensis is starting to rot, and I've only noticed this a couple of days ago. First, I tried arresting it by arresting the, the spread by, by spraying some antifungal solution, but it looks like it's still progressing. So what I'm going to do is to remove it from this spot, place it somewhere dry for now, and then observe. So I'm going to remove it from the soil. I have a feeling that it's not draining properly or maybe the roots are compacted. We'll find out when I pull it up. So the leaves on this chihuahuaensis is yellowing and becoming transparent. I will have to take it apart to have a better look, you know, just to see what's happening. What I think is this soil, because what I did was to just remove it from the pot and just stick it in the ground and it feels damp to the touch. So maybe I should have, you know, when I when I planted this before, maybe I should have completely replaced the soil. Because it looks like there's a lot of cocoa, cocoa lining, wood chips and fine, fine stuff here. So maybe it was retaining more water than it should. I'm not sure if you can see this, but this circle thingy over here, that's a sign of fungal in infection, fungal attack. So this is a fungus colony forming. I'm just going to remove the leaves that I can. I've already sprayed an antifungal solution a few days ago, so I don't need to put one put more now. But I'm going to remove as much of the infected areas as I can. Due to the shape of the leaves and how how the node is connected to the main stem, I have to pull this sideways. That way I can get the whole the whole leaf removed. So if I just pull it outwards, it will break off. So I have to do it slowly but firmly. Going sideways. There. So I'll just remove all of the affected leaves. This might seem sad, but all is not lost because uh, fungal attacks and rotting almost always happens when there are pups underneath and there's too much water. This is mainly because of the lack of airflow underneath. So I'm not really that concerned whenever I get fungal infection. Well, when my plants get fungal infection. Just make sure to clean the area. Here are some spores. The brown powder like thingies. So I just have to be careful to, to remove them and not allow them to spread. Looks like the extent of the damage is great, but I'll eventually get through to all of them. As you can see, the rot is extensive and I've removed a lot of leaves. There's a few left, but the pups look happy, so I'm, I'm not that concerned. Ooh, I might still need to remove this leaf. So just make sure to remove all of the affected parts. For now, I'm happy with this, but I'm going to I'm going to observe and see if there are further 
spreading and if there are I would chop off the top and maybe separate the, the pups yes as I keep saying I'm going to place it somewhere dry for now but hopefully away from the other babies I'm just thinking now where can I put it yeah maybe here just stay there for now until I get a pot for you here are all all of the leaves that I removed and some flower stalks I should be able to harvest some seeds from these because they have already been pollinated but I'm going to set this aside and I'll harvest this over the weekend again I'm going to keep this somewhere dry so in my prop in my propagation station they go there's now a blank spot in the landscape I haven't thought about what I'll replace it with but that's something I'll have to think about this weekend so what's the lesson in all of this? well so if the, the existing soil mix looks like it's retaining a lot of water replace it or better yet make sure I replace all of the soil of the, the succulents that I buy just to be sure just to be on the safe side last night I set aside this chihuahuaensis so it would dry I could totally ignore and skip this step but I didn't have the time to work on this last night so I figured I continue working on this in the morning and so, as I mentioned, I was leaving it out to dry. So I just had this sitting in shade without any exposure to, to moisture. And now it looks fairly dry. And if you recall, yesterday I removed as much as I can of the, the infected, le infected leaves. And you can see here, there's a whole lot of leaves that I have removed. It doesn't look like the the whole stem is infected just the outer parts the, the parts where there were leaves and I'm hoping it stays that way for for now I'm just going to leave it like this I'm not going to be cutting it up and you know uh, chopping it chopping the whole thing off I'm going to see and this is a risk that I'm willing to take I'm going to see if the if any of the rot the infection would be spreading so for now, I'll, be, I'll try to have a, a better look because I've already removed most of the leaves. I'm going to see if there are any remaining ones, in fact, remaining infection that I haven't seen yet. And I should remove those leaves if I see them. The other thing that I should do is to, if you have a look at this soil, the root ball, it's quite compact and hard. Well, not too hard, but it's compacted, and this was the main reason for the rot. I'm hoping that uh, the cause is not a root rot, because that, be, that would be really tough to manage, man. So what I'll do is, I'm going to break up this root ball and have a look at the roots and see what, what's going on there. So I'm just going to use one of my spades just pierce through the root ball it's all right if I destroy the roots because all I need to do is to break apart the soil and you know it's growing season so it's all right if I completely demolish the roots they would be growing them anyway yeah so far the material used here is very clumpy and looks like there's a lot of coir or coconut like materials causing causing the soil to clump there's lots of perlite 
And what else? I wouldn't say the soil is poor quality, but this this is the type of soil that's perfect for for pots, I guess, but not good out in the landscape, in the garden. Out in the garden where I water differently than in pots. So, yep. It's mainly my fault for not doing this before I but uh, before I planted it in the ground because usually I would completely remove the soil or break up the, the root ball but I wanted it to grow you know I, I wanted it to not stagnate in its growth so I figured I could just dig a small hole and just plug the whole thing in without breaking the soil and that's that was my mistake so I'm just going to completely break apart the soil and free up as much as I can of the roots. There's still quite a few clumps here that I could probably destroy. And that's what I'm doing now. Now that I've now that I've broken apart most of the clumps, clumps of soil, I'm going to have a look at the leaves. Cause I now have a better view of them. It looks like the, the offsets, the pups, they're doing great. There's no their stems are not rotting. So it looks like it's just this section, small section here and not the entire stem. So th this tells me that the roots, uh, th there is no root and stem rot inside. It was all external. And hopefully by keeping it dry for now, it's not going to spread towards the inside. Another thing that, I'm, that makes me relieved is that the roots, they're pretty light. They don't look, uh, they don't look rotten to me. They look healthy. So, yep, overall I'm still happy and I'm glad, I'm relieved, I'm glad that I, yeah, I'm still glad that I worked on it, I removed the leaves and, and stuff. It's better to know than not to know and not do anything about it. Besides, it's going to grow anyway, so I'm not too concerned that I lost a big plant. It's now a tiny again, the rosette is tiny, but in time, it will regrow. I'll just have to forget about this for a while. So you know that the soil is clumpy, because if you have a look, if I squish them together, they form and they don't break apart again, they don't crumble apart. So this is... This could be detrimental to the health of the plants, oh, or rather, this could be detrimental to the health of the succulents. Look, it's like clay, although not same in texture as clay, but it forms like clay. This might be better for, better for the, the, the types that love water, because this one would re definitely retain moisture. But not for these types, especially given the way I water them. Because I completely drench them in soil. Uh, I mean, I completely drench them in water. So definitely not suited to my, to my style. Look at this clump. It's not crumbling. It's keeping its form. And this I've already I've already left this to dry for a day overnight so imagine how much more clump it is when it's wet I was thinking of throwing away this soil but on second thought maybe I should save it because maybe I have other types of plants that would that would love this type the moisture-retaining type of soil. 
So this is another lesson learned, something that I've been taking for granted. You know what? I just realized that maybe all this time it was trying to tell me it was constricted, but I wasn't paying attention. And you know what? I find it funny that during our wet winter, it didn't rot. And I think the, the water it gets from the rain is enough to sustain it. So we do get some rains once in a while, but I guess it was just right. I would imagine that the water would be soaked, but I guess not as much as the way I water them. And back back in winter, I wasn't I wasn't watering them at all. So they were just getting enough. All right. So now what I'm thinking of doing next is to move it into this terracotta pot. And I'm choosing terracotta because this dries easily. And I just had the problem of uh, the root ball getting too wet, staying too wet. So this would be perfect. I'll move it in here. But first, I'll need to mix a fresh batch of soil because I, I was running out. So I already, I or already poured the soil in and some pebbles, but I have to mix them. So I guess it was telling me it wants to break free. <laughs> now I've got that Queen song stuck in my head. I want to break free. I want to break free. I want to break free from your lies. You're so self-satisfied, I don't need you. I want to break free. God knows. God knows I want to break free. Yeah. Um, hard to get that tune out of my head. All right. Now I'm going to put this in the pot. And like my usual method, well, I have to prepare my spades. Because as you remember, I have two uh, a deep one and a shallow one but wide so in this case this isn't going to fill up the diameter of the the pot so i could get away with using the the deeper type so i'll start by filling it up with a bit of soil and i'll just check I'll just check if there's enough. Yep, the roots are touching the, the bottom. So this is good enough. Just getting more soil. I'm just raising it again, just so the roots stretch out. And it's a bit more soil. Yep, this one went loose. But it doesn't look like it's rotten, so maybe it was just loose all along. There. 
That should be good enough. So all I need to do now is to move it somewhere shady and where it wouldn't be getting wet. Problem is, I, I was thinking that the bottom shelf would be a good spot for it, but I regularly mist and water the trays here. So I might need to go for one of the upper shelves. Yes, I think that would be a better place for it. It will be staying there for a while until I see signs of recovery. I'm not going to water it for maybe about a week or until it starts looking dry. For now, I'll just have to leave it to recover. So you might be wondering why I seem to know what I have to do. It's mainly because of experience, because I've killed a lot of plants due to fungus. And here are some of the survivors. And these ones have been infected by fungus as well. And I managed to do the right thing for them. So let me go through them and share with you what I did. So this first one, this is a black knight. It was originally a larger plant, but unfortunately it was it got too wet over autumn and the first parts of winter. So what happened was it got infected by, the, the roots got infected. So it was, uh, it started off at the roots, and then it went up to the stem. Parts of the stem, parts, the lower parts of the stem were already getting black. And I only noticed when some of the leaves were falling off, turning mushy. And I was wondering what was happening there. So when I pulled it up, that's when I saw uh, most of the stem, the lower parts of the stem were turning black. So what I did, what I had to do was to chop, chop off the stem uh, immediately above the, the blackened parts. So I had to entirely remove the, the head of the rosette because I have to separate, separate the, the healthy parts from the, the infected parts. And since, yeah, since it happened in winter, it was dormant. So I just left it inside this terracotta pot with dry soil, dry and loose soil. And I think it has been three months now, two or three months. I'm trying to wiggle it around. It looks like it's not holding tight. So it means it hasn't developed an extensive root system yet. So I might as well pull it up now and have a look. So I was right. The root system isn't extensive yet, so let me just focus on this. There. There's a few roots coming out, but that's a good sign. So it means it's starting to grow. And right now, as you can see, it's a bit wrinkly. So I might need to start watering, watering this one now. And in case you were wondering how I arrested the, the fungal growth from prevented it from spreading what i did was uh, i chopped off the, the infected parts which was which were everything below this stem so i chopped it off remove most of the leaves remove the leaves that were starting to to get uh, rotten and i sprayed it with a antifungal solution just the the regular pre-made mix that you would find in your local Guard, uh, garden supply store. The, the mix that I used was systemic, so I had to make sure that there are no flowers because otherwise this could affect the, the pollinators like bees. And yep, after leaving it to dry for a few days because the cut is quite huge, I had to make sure it was completely callous before I stuck it in the soil. So now I'm putting it back in and give it a little mound. 
so it's back in and a little mounded and maybe later today I'll start watering looks like I stuck under another pop here and it, it has also started rooting so yep I'll need to water this soon this one is doing fine now so I did right with that one another victim to my to my not so good handling of plants is this one this is an Echeveria Shaviana it used to be much larger before same story as my black my black knight so as you can see uh, it has dense leaves there's a lot of leaves actually and they're tightly packed so the problem was I can't remember if it was the soil it was also compact like the, the Chihuahua Ensis a while ago but what I did was I planted it in I planted this directly in the soil and I don't I don't think I mounted it properly so basically the water would tend to pull pull around it and it would uh, sometimes drown I guess when it's raining so some rotting started and the lower leaves were all falling out thankfully it didn't, it didn't go through the stem so I didn't have to chop off the stem what I ended up with was uh, a rosette and only the top leaves were okay everything below were all dark and turning brown so I have to remove all of them and I also some I also saw some fungal spores so I did the same treatment gave it an antifungal solution sprayed it then left it to dry so this has I think I think uh, the infection the infestation happened around autumn so this had this has had more time to to recover compared to my black knight so it's looking better now and it's starting to produce more leaves the rosette is getting larger again so I'm happy and then there's these two these are both raindrops same thing happened to both of them this one mainly this one was mainly because it has lots of pops so the airflow was less than ideal at the bottom and it was planted at the same area as my Shaviana so as you can imagine uh, it was constantly wet and moist and that's perfect conditions for fungus to grow so yep I did the same treatment I removed all of the infected leaves so as you can see there's a lot of bare spots and this one as well I just removed all of the infected leaves and sprayed with my antifungal solution and left them in the dry area dry spot the whole thing happened during winter so it's been about one or two months and it looks like they're recovering now because if you look closely at the stem like this one it's getting more green the middle so this tells me it's looking healthy so I hope my experience would show you what to do when you're experiencing the same thing I think I ha I'll have to show you the, the antifungal spray that I was using so this is just an off-the-shelf fungus spray that I get from my local hardware local hardware and nursery so pretty standard the thing to take note here is it is systemic so make sure that there are no flowers because otherwise this would affect the bees so it just says here in the application instructions just spray thoroughly including undersides of foliage Commence spraying when new shoots emerge in spring or at first sign of disease. 
and repeat at 14 days intervals if required. I think I only did one month, so that's two sprays because it seemed to recover. I'm not sure if what I, I was doing was right, but at least it seems to work. So there's that. I'm not the authority on fungus, so you could uh, double check with other sources if you need to. So I was going around the garden earlier looking for a suitable replacement for my chihuahuaensis because as you remember, I pulled it out of the ground and left a big hole where it used to be. And from my collection, I think this would be good replacement. This is an Echeveria tipi. This is, uh, this is related to the Derenbergi. It's one of the hybrids produced from Derenbergi. It's quite small. I'm not sure what, what size it goes up to. It's definitely not the same size, not, at, not as large as Chihuahuaensis. But it will do. Because I was mainly after uh, the rosette that looks similar, you know, uh, a cup ball, the leaves slightly pointy, and a dense number of leaves, so a dense rosette. This is the look I'm going for. So this should be a suitable replacement. And this one, the soil of this one has been really good. It's also my own mix. And from the looks of things, it's trying to push out a new pup, no, two pups. So this one looks healthy and I'm pretty sure it will do well in the spot. I just have to make sure that the roots are, are in loose soil. Better make sure that I don't do the same mistake as I did with my chihuahuaensis. So here we are in that spot where the chihuahuaensis used to be. The mission here is that I'm going to plant this in that spot. But right now I'm not sure how deep the roots of this one are. So what I'm going to do for now is just to reserve the space and make sure it's loose. It's pretty loose, so I'm not really worried about that. And I'll pull out, pull out the, the tipi. But I have to loosen everything first, so I'm squeezing the pot. And slowly, looks like it's still wet, but it's alright. So I'm going to make sure that the soil is loose. So I'm going to break out, break apart the, the root ball. But, I'll, but unlike what I did with the chihuahuaensis, I don't need to cut off or trim off the roots. So I'll just break them apart as possible. As much as I can. So this seems to work. And what I'm going to do is just make a mound around it by adding soil. Almost there. So when dealing with spaces like this, sometimes it's easier if you just keep adding soil into one spot that's easy to reach, then use whatever tool you have. It could be a spade or maybe your fingers. I generally use my fingers for better dexterity. So just use, use whatever tool you pick to shift the soil around. So it's easy for me to lay the soil here, so I just put them here and I just shove them out, move them wherever I need them to go. Yep, I'm happy with this. So while working on the tipi in the middle, I noticed that this two on the other side, these two echeverias seem to be not mounted properly. And I can't remember if I just plugged in using the original soil or whether I loosened the, them up. But it looks like they haven't suffered the same fate as the Chihuahuaensis. But just to make sure, because 
I'm not sure if it's visible from there, but it looks like I haven't mounted this properly. And right now, it's it's turning, it's facing facing the other side. Although mainly, I think this is mainly because of the sun, because there's more sunlight over in that direction. But still, uh, if I didn't know better, I, I would probably think that something is up uprooting it. So I might need to shift this sagita around, either turn it around or just tilt it a bit more. So yeah, I'm going to pull it out and see what's what's up with it. And yeah, looks like it's a bit compact, but maybe it's just because the the roots are thick now but I'll go ahead and turn it around but not before trying to loosen up the soil yeah, the soil doesn't look as bad as the Ch Chihuahuaensis but it pays to be on the safe side so I'll just loosen up the roots and turn it around wait I might need to reserve some space so I'll dig a little hole just so I have a foothold or the roots have a foothold there facing this direction now and I can shift the soil back to create a mound add a bit more soil because I I remove some in the process. I could try remove some of the lower leaves that have already dried out. Because this should this could help with airflow. And the more airflow the less and the more airflow the less chance of rot happening. Because Fungus loves damp environments, cold and damp. And cold and damp is a product of lack of airflow. So here we go. The pearls are happy. They have crept all the way here. But, yep. And now I'm looking at this part. It looks like the soil isn't even, so I'll pull this golden glow out, remove some of the dry leaves, I have to decide which direction I want it to face. Maybe this one, like this. So I'll just loosen up the root ball because this one looks compact as well. No good. There. Looks loose now. So I'm going to reserve a bit of space. For the root ball don't have to dig too much just a little bit and I'll shift the soil back to create a mound add a bit more soil since it's hard to reach here I'm just going to shift the soil around And there, this looks better now. Now, something else I've been noticing. So let's just shift slightly up. This area is quite 
depressed as in it's low. So this one is a bit high, then this is low. I'm not happy with that because I'm not I'm not happy with how the slope looks like. So what I'm going to do is to remove this and top up the soil. So I brought some with me. Just going to pour them over. until I get the, the level that I desire. There, I think that's good enough. So I'll just shift the soil around to create the level that I want. The slope, not the level, the so slope. And I'm going to put back the Echeveria Glaucas that I remove space them apart where are the others? So I'm hoping that they would fill up the space, so I'm planting them apart right now. But it looks like it will be happening soon because a lot of them are pushing out offsets, pushing out babies, like this one. Yeah, we'll see what happens in summer. <laughs> 